Hi, welcome to Lodestone. This is Mark Hooper. And in this session, we're going to create a three-dimensional pan and zoom of a photograph from Photoshop in After Effects and create a video from it. So the topics that we're going to cover in this demonstration include, we'll start off in Photoshop and we'll explore the Photoshop file, the layered Photoshop file. Then we'll import that layered Photoshop file into After Effects. We'll create a composition using those layers. We'll take a look at the basic properties of layers in After Effects and then make those layers into three-dimensional layers. Next, we'll add a camera layer and then use the camera layer to create the pan and zoom. Finally, we'll export our finished file out as a QuickTime movie, an MPEG-4, a flash video, whatever your choice is. So let's get started. Okay, we're going to start in Photoshop. I just want to show you how I created the file that we're going to be using. So it took an old photo and made a selection here of the grandparents, made that into its own selection, which you can see here. So the grandparents are on a separate layer. And then I had the background. And when I cut the grandparents out, I had a transparent area that I filled in using a combination of content aware, clone stamp, and uh, some other different techniques. So that really is the, the key to creating this project is making sure that you fill in the area behind the individuals with content that is going to uh, now be visible as we do our pan and zoom on this photo that we're going to do three dimensionally in After Effects. So this file is ready to go. I'm just going to uh, close out of the file. Go ahead and save it. And now I'm going to go over to After Effects and we're ready here to begin in After Effects. So After Effects starts off with a welcome screen. But whenever you're working with After Effects, even if you don't have a project open, you actually have a project open that's ready, untitled project, as you can see here at the top, an untitled project that's ready for you to bring in resources. I'm just going to cancel out of the welcome screen and we're going to go about bringing in that Photoshop file. So I'm going to go up and choose File, Import, Files, going to find the grandparents Photoshop file and I need to import this not as footage but actually as a composition we're going to choose composition retain layer sizes so that the boundaries of each layer are around the actual layer and not to the dimensions of the composition so I'm going to choose composition retain layer sizes I'll go ahead and accept the defaults here again just confirming retain layer sizes editable layer styles if I had anything like drop shadows and things like that I had done in Photoshop, all of that would be available to be edited in After Effects as well. So go ahead and click OK, and it creates a composition that has a timeline. But the problem is this composition, if I double click and open it up, you can see the composition is actually the size of the photo. As I hover over, like the grandparents, you can see the boundaries are around that actual layer. That's why we chose to retain the uh, layer sizes. We're not going to use this composition, but we needed to do this so that it would bring in a folder that has, here in our composition uh, project window, a folder that has our individual layers. So I'm going to go up and choose to create a new composition. So go composition, new composition. I'm going to call this grandparents pan and zoom going to use a preset size here of NTSC widescreen. The pixel aspect ratio though I need to adjust because I did this in Photoshop. It was an image that we had and it's using square pixels. After Effects will recognize square pixels as well. The default here with video is more rectangular pixels. But we're going to change this to square pixels to work with our photo. Duration time of 30 seconds. That's plenty. I'm not going to use the entire amount but giving myself a little bit of XF footage here is good. Background color, black is fine. We're not actually going to be uh, seeing that. So whatever background color is fine. I'll click OK. Now I'm ready to bring in my resources. So I'm going to go to the background layer in the layers folder. Shift select the other. I need to release the uh, composition there. 
So I just need these two layers here, the background and the grandparents. I'm going to drag this down to the composition window. And if I click to release, I'm going to need to adjust the layer stack. The background needs to be below. So I just drag that down below here. And now I have my composition almost ready to go. Now the background needs to be expanded to fit inside the window and also not just go to the width. I need to make it a little bit larger so that I can use this with my camera and not be able to see any of the black as I'm rotating in a three dimensional environment. So if I expand the properties here by clicking on the triangle here and go into transform, you can see all of my, and these are two dimensional properties, but anchor point, position, scale, that's what I need to actually uh, go to is adjust the scale values. We're going to be bringing in a camera and working in 3D, so we need to actually convert these to three-dimensional layers. So I'm going to go up here in my composition timeline and turn on the master 3D, draft 3D switch. And then for the individual layers underneath the cube, I'm going to turn on 3D for both of these layers. And you're going to see that the properties have now added to it, not just X and Y. Now we have a third value here for the Z index. X goes across, Y goes up and down, and the Z is the depth. So as I expand here, I can see lots of different properties here. Rotation values, opacity values. But we're mainly concerned with scale. I'm just going to collapse the properties here and show you a shortcut. If I just want to go to the scale properties, with this layer selected, I'll press S for scale. The other properties are the same. I can press A for anchor point, P for position, R for rotation, but for opacity, the keyboard shortcut is T. So if I press T there for opacity, it's going to bring up that layer. So I'm going to switch back to scale, but let's say I want to see opacity and scale. If I use the shift key and start pressing any of these keyboard shortcuts, I can see as I'm holding down the shift key and press these P and S, I can see the other values as well. We're going to adjust the scale. The scale is linked. So I see the chain link here that if I adjust one, it's going to adjust X, Y, and Z. So as I hover over one of these values, I see a hand with arrows. I'm just going to increase the scale here up to about, I'll go about 150. And then it's going to collapse that properties and I'm ready to bring in my camera layer. So we're going to go up to layer, new camera. I'm going to take the defaults here, click OK. And camera works with items in 3D. In my composition window, I can see the active camera, which is actually the camera one but I'm going to modify the grandparents and bring them a little bit closer. To be able to see this, I actually have some monitor cameras that I can use. So if I click on the active camera area, I'm going to switch to custom view one, and I can see this from a different perspective. I can actually see where the camera is focused on my composition as well. I'm going to bring the grandparents forward. So if I go to the grandparents layer, press P for position, and I'm going to adjust the Z, which is the last value here, which is set to zero right now. As I hover over, I see my arrows. I'm going to drag a negative value. A negative value will actually bring the subjects forward. So I'm going to go to about 140 here. I'm going to switch to my camera tools up here in the top. And I'm going to switch to the orbit tool so you can see as I rotate this around, as I'm in this custom view, it just allows me to be able to see exactly the distance and how all of my information is looking in this three dimensional environment. It has nothing to do with the final composition when you're in one of these custom views. But if I switch back to the camera view, and I'm going to go now to my camera one layer, I'll collapse the properties for my grandparents and go to my camera layer. I'm going to make adjustments to the point of interest, 
which is A on your keyboard, similar to anchor point. So I press A, I get point of interest. I'm gonna hold down the shift key, press P for position. And my timeline is at the very beginning. So I'm going to make a modification here that's going to be my initial frame to start off with. Using some of the other camera tools, I'm gonna to use the track XY tool that allows me to uh, move this left or right up and down. So I'm going to move this over. Then I'm going to switch to the Z camera tool. I can click with my mouse and drag up or down. I'm going to zoom in to get an initial starting frame zoomed in here on the foliage. Now that I have an initial starting frame, my timeline's at the beginning. I want the point of interest and position to get keyframes there. So I'm going to hit the stopwatch for point of interest, the stopwatch for position, and now I'm ready to go down my timeline. I can scrub my timeline by moving my playhead, or if I want to go to five seconds, I'll simply go to the time code here and type 500 for five seconds, zero frames. And because my camera layer is selected, my uh, point of interest and position, the keyframe stopwatch is turned on. So any changes that I make here will add more keyframes here at five seconds. I'm going to start here with my track Z, which is still selected, and I'm going to zoom out. Then I'm going to switch to my XY camera tool. And I'm going to move my subjects over, and I may even adjust the track Z again. And the XY again. So I have a position here at five. Let me go to 10 seconds on my timeline. So I just type in 1000 for 10 seconds, zero frames. And I'm gonna adjust the orbit value here to turn this into a different look here in the three dimensional environment. And this is why it was so important that we have that additional information. And let me also zoom out a little bit more for our final position here. And I'll just the XY one more time. So I'm ready to preview this now. But before I do that, I want to ease these keyframes so they're not so, so hard going from keyframe to keyframe. If I select point of interest here in the timeline, hold down the shift key, and select the position. It selects all of these keyframes. I'm going to right click on one of these keyframes, go to keyframe assistant and choose easy ease. So it eases in and out of these keyframes. Now I'm ready to preview. I'll go to my preview window here. The very last option gives me a RAM preview. It will generate all the frames. And you can see now our pan and zoom for our grandparents is looking pretty nice. So now that my video is ready, I'm ready to render it out. I'm gonna go up and choose File, Export, Add to Render Queue, and then I'll choose the settings that I want to use. I've already loaded it one time, so I'll go to this second one. And I wanna use the best settings, but I could adjust that to be uh, wireframe, draft, we're going to use best. So I click on OK. Just going through the basics here of the out, output. Click here on the output module where it says lossless. I can choose from different formats. So if you want FLV, F4V, MPEG, whatever your preference is, you should be able to export that out. I'm just going to leave it at QuickTime. And I'll click OK. And then I need to specify where I want to output it to. So output to. I'll choose the location and then simply click on render. And when it's done, your video will be ready in that directory. Thank you so much for being with us at Lodestone. And for more detailed instruction, go to www.lodestone.com.